The wilderness was an integral part of who my husband was. And because it fed him, he wove that part of himself into his life work, which is, was an environmental attorney. He also worked for the tribes. I would never have seen a lot of what I have seen and done if it wasn't for my husband. His best days were days spent out in the wilderness, and, and I would say truly his first love really is the wilderness. And that's a good first love. Story. This morning, search and rescue crews will resume. Here's the plan tonight. They plan to bring a helicopter in here. Over the weekend, 145 volunteers narrowed the search area. When I got up that morning, I had that feeling um, kind of in my gut that something had happened because he always came home. And he always, I always had a phone call. For many of us, this is what search and rescue looks like. Dramatic headline stories. Some with happy endings, some with devastating finality. But to those of us who call our wilderness treasures home, the words search and rescue have a more personal meaning. They started to um, do what they do, you know, get people like Kelly Bush and such involved. We couldn't have had a better person um, looking for my husband. People come here from all over the world and I love that the park rangers help them find a trip to do, help them know what their interests are and what, how they would like to experience the North Cascades. And that is when everything goes fine. It, another part of it is sometimes the trips don't go that well and an accident happens or something goes wrong. And that's where the arena of search and rescue comes in. Volunteer groups throughout the region are ready at a moment's notice to assist park rangers and Washington's National Park Fund funding finds its way to all of them, providing invaluable technical training and urgently needed equipment. We tend to turn to the volunteer groups when we need a lot of search teams. And we find that the, the local groups, which are volunteer teams from Bellingham down through Tacoma, organized out of each county, are really well trained. I think that the best thing that that I could do with any money that I don't necessarily have right now would be to augment our training funds, particularly for the specialty maneuvers that we do for helicopter rescue, the short haul program. One of the things that we know that the search and rescue teams need is good equipment. Good equipment can save lives. Our rangers deserve the best equipment in order to best be of service to us. Equipment such as carbon fiber litters can save as much as 30 pounds, weight that no longer has to be hauled out over rough terrain. Wetsuits for swift water rescue are in short supply. And the annual replacement of supply caches ensure that these volunteers will have what they need when and where they need it. They're there. They're there to help us. And uh, we trust them and we're in their hands. Our life is in their hands oftentimes, and oh, you would want to support that. A lot of people want to give back to, to the Park Service or to the rangers that assisted them, and several families now have, have done that, and then it translates back into assistance to the park. The search and rescue teams that were out there um, spending the night um, Searching for someone they didn't even know is a, a, just a, an amazing, they're amazing human beings and it takes a tremendous amount of um, fortitude to do what they do and I, I feel such gratitude to all of them. They do it because of who they are and it requires a certain kind of human being to do this kind of work. It's important work and um, I hope that you all will find it in your hearts too help give them an unequivocal yes that we need you and we need um, we, we want to support you I do